Hello friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Callie Brainsford. Thanks for stopping by. The other day I shared with you guys on Instagram stories that I was working on the gallery wall that now is behind me and spans this entire wall. And I was actually surprised because I got flooded with a ton of questions and requests to sort of share like how to do it. And I, I guess I get it because gallery walls are very intimidating. But the way that I feel about a gallery wall is there really isn't any right way to do it as long as you like the way that it looks and it makes you happy. But like I said, I do know that it is a little intimidating to do a gallery wall. So what I wanted to do is film the entire process of start to finish of me hanging my gallery wall and sort of share with you some of the tips and tricks that I use to hang in a gallery wall to make it a little less intimidating. I would say the majority of the questions I got came down to picking the art. So I'm gonna break down how I pick the art into a couple of categories as well as where I get art. So first thing comes down to size. Personally, I like to have a variety of size. I think that it just adds interest to the gallery wall. So I like to have a, sm a mixture of small pieces from like as small as four by six to large pieces like bigger than 11 by 16. And one tip that I like to suggest is always pick one anchor piece. This is one piece that's like pretty large. Something that I commonly see with gallery walls is people picking pieces that are too small for a wall that is too big and then it starts to look a little bit puny. So really try to step out of your box a little bit and get something a little bit large. And then one other thing I always like to suggest is consider maybe getting one or two things that aren't framed. Things like pennants or something that's circular or just something that's a little bit different. These can be a little bit harder to work with and to mix in, but I do think that they add a lot of interest to a gallery wall. Moving on to color, which is probably hands down the most common question I got, is do you do a color matching scheme? And my answer is like a little bit. Personally, I'm not super matchy matchy. If you're really matchy matchy, you can do a matchy matchy gallery wall and it'll look super great. It's not my exact style, but I do kind of work with my pieces to make sure that they're matching and they go together cohesively, if that makes sense. So I'll walk you through how I did it on this wall. So I started with a bunch of black and white pieces. I had some black and white artwork and I printed out some old family photos that were black and white as well. And I started with that as my base. And then I had two sort of more colorful pieces that I already owned that I wanted to incorporate in and these had a bunch of oranges in them and then one of them also kind of had some oranges and blues and orange and blue are complementary colors so I knew these would work really well together and that allowed me to bring in a couple of pieces that had some blue as well. So I guess the short answer is that I use some general guidelines. I do think about colors that are complementary and sort of go well together. If there's color in one piece I can sort of grab that color from another piece and make them work but at the end of the day you kind of have to end up laying them down on the floor or on a table and looking at them together before you decide if you're gonna hang them up and they're gonna go together or not. Lastly, when it comes to frames, personally, I like to stick to two or less frame types. So for the wall that I did, I did all white frames or all black frames. I did have one outlier because I had one piece that was already framed in a natural wood. Um, but when I placed it in there, it kinda worked. So I just went with it. I also really like the look of going for all one frame color, especially if you have a lot of variety in your art. And especially if you're somebody who really struggles to do like the mismatchy look. Personally, I always just default to white if I'm not sure because I feel like white is clean and it goes with pretty much everything. Okay, so where do I get my art and where do I get my frames? Now, as far as art, I get it a couple of places. One, majority of my art comes from travel. Art is what I get as souvenirs when I travel. Um, I like it because it's easy to travel with and I like hanging up in my house because then it's like a really nice way to like always remember the place that you win. Also, you can usually get it for not crazy expensive. Sometimes when I've been traveling, I've bought like original artwork, but other times a little trick that I like to use, um, you can actually just buy a postcard. I know lots of postcards are super touristy. They're like a photograph or like, you know, obviously a postcard, but if you really keep your eye out when you're traveling, you can often find postcards or gift cards that are done by local artists that are local scenery. These cost a couple dollars. You bring them home, you put them in a nice matted frame and they look like artwork. And this is a great way to collect some artwork for your home. As far as buying art, especially for filler pieces. I did need some filler pieces for this uh, gallery that I, you know, I just didn't have enough artwork. I like going to Etsy.com. You could buy printable um, downloads. So it's only like four or five dollars, maybe tops 10 or 12 dollars. And you get the PSD file and then you can print it out at Staples or at Shutterstock. Um, and this is great because Etsy has so much digital artwork 
So you can get pretty much anything that you're looking for and then you can print it in whatever size works for you, which is really great when you're working with a gallery wall, you might need something smaller or something bigger. So it's just really great, like I said, for filling in pieces. Another place that I really like to find, buy um, more kind of fine art is minted.com. Minted.com is all independent artists and then they sell their prints. And the nice thing about Minted is you can just like buy them framed. They are a little bit more expensive, but it's really nice because you're getting it from an independent artist. You can know a little bit more about the artist um, and the frames that they come in are super high quality. So if you want to add in a few nicer pieces, that's an another really great place to shop. And then as far as frames, the majority of my frames I usually buy uh, at Michael's. Um, either in the store or michaels.com. You can get them in every shape. You can get them with a mat, without a mat. But these are all gonna be standard frame sizes. So if you do have artwork that's like an unusual size and you need to have it custom framed, personally, I really like Frame Bridge. They're a little bit more expensive, but the frames are super, super great quality, especially if you're framing something that's really important. They send you the packing stuff that you will need. You ship it out to them. They frame it and send it back to you. Um, so it's really easy. All right, guys, it's time to move on to the fun part, but also the intimidating part, and that is arranging your gallery wall. So let me walk you through my steps. Step number one, map out your space on the floor. I like to use painter's tape and I map out the width as well as the height of the floor. So I, I map out the space that I wanna fill so I know where I'm working. I like to work on the floor because you can really move stuff around. You'll see in my process, I move stuff around a lot as I'm figuring out what I wanna do. Step number two is start with your anchor piece. Like I said, it's really nice to have one big anchor piece because um, it makes it really easy to work off of it, if that makes sense as opposed to trying to start with all of your little pieces. So place your anchor piece first and then work off of that. Next, I just start placing things. Um, personally, I like to try to work in columns because that kind of works in my mind. And sometimes something will span two columns, but I try to work in general columns because it makes it easier to place things. And I kind of am just moving stuff around. The nice thing about doing this is there's no commitment. Just keep moving stuff until things start to look how you like. If you're not totally sure, you know, take a second, stand up, stand back, look at it. Now, another thing that can be hard about a gallery wall is you kind of feel like everything needs to be perfectly aligned. So I'd say don't stress too much about everything being perfect. A trick that I like to use is I will align everything along the top. So everything is aligned along the horizontal top. And then as I go down, it doesn't need to all like end at the same spot. It kind of like tapers off. Final note is make sure that you're not spacing your photos too far apart. I'd say one of the bigger like mistakes I see, or I know one of the big mistakes I used to make when I did my first few gallery walls was putting way too much space between the frames. It makes them feel like they're not part of the gallery wall, like they're just not part of like one cohesive unit. The cool impactful thing about a gallery wall is that all this piece of art kind of becomes one piece of art together, if that makes sense. And if you're spacing them too far apart, you don't get that effect. Final step is it's, it is time to hang. You've laid everything out, you like how it works, now you need to get it up onto the wall. I have four steps that's going to make it pretty easy for you. First one is I like to use painter's tape to mark out where specific artwork is going. I don't do this for every single piece, but for spots where I'm kind of unsure, I wanna know exactly where I should hang something and how it's gonna look, I use a strip of painter's tape in the width of the frame and I mark it out. It's also a really nice way to just make sure the artwork is properly filling the space because it can be hard to visualize it. And if it's easier for you, mark out every single one of your frames before you hang them so you can really have a visual look of how it's gonna be. Step number two is get command picture hanging strips. These things are so amazing. I've used them for multiple years, never had a frame fall down, I've never damaged a wall using them, and what's beautiful about them is you're not putting any holes in your wall. So one, it takes away all the fear and commitment of putting holes in your wall and then realizing you put the hole in the wrong spot because I have hung gallery walls before and ended up with way more holes in my wall than I wanted to. And I feel like it makes it easier to commit to hanging the picture because you know if you mess it up, you can just take it down and put it up again and you didn't damage anything. I also like, because if you accidentally hang something that's not perfectly level, even though you know you were like measuring perfectly, you just like pop it off and you can just readjust it and stick it back up. Third tip is to hang that anchor piece first. For me, because I go with everything aligned horizontally, I start with my anchor piece in the top and then I work my way down. It's just, like I said, easiest to work off that biggest piece and then work your way out. Fourth tip is probably pretty obvious, but get yourself a level because then you'll make sure that when you're hanging things, everything's nice and straight. All right guys, so there you have it. That is my general process for hanging a gallery wall. Some tips and tricks I've learned along the way from hanging lots of gallery walls and hanging some bad ones and finally figuring out a rhythm that works pretty good for me. 
I'm not like a professional interior designer. Somebody could probably do this a million times better than me, but this gallery wall makes me super happy. I love the way it looks in the space and it's full of like art and pieces that mean something to me and I love that about it. Okay, I'm just gonna pop into my questions on my Instagram stories really quick and make sure I didn't miss any gallery wall questions. The first one is what are a few must have elements for a gallery wall? I would say, like I said at the end of the day, I don't think there's any right way to do it. Personally, I like variety. So if it were up to me, I'd say get some fine art, get some real art, get some photographs, get something that's not art. This question says, how do you even begin? Do you start with just one picture and then build around that? So the answer is yes, you totally can start with just one and then build around that. Like I said, you can start with an anchor piece. If you're like not sure where to start at all, that's probably what I would suggest. Get like one or two anchor pieces, either something that's a little bit larger or maybe something that's like very bold and colorful and then try to work off of that. But what's a little bit easier is maybe to start with um, a set. That's what I did here is I had a bunch of stuff that was black and white. Like I said, I had some black and white photos and I had some black and white art and I started there and then I started to bring more pieces in. This question says, where should I print out art or photographs, especially during the quarantine? Personally, I suggest having a proper printing company do it because it's gonna be better quality. I used Shutterfly because I could upload and then they just sent it to me. Um, so it was all done digitally and I didn't have to go out for it. All right, my friends, that does it. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.